It is honourable for a man to stop striving, since any fool can start a quarrel. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3. Solomon saying, telling us, striving is important, but there is a time to give up on a particular goal. And if you do step back, it's not necessarily a sign of weakness or of failure. Striving can be after a material goal, and striving can be to win a point in an argument. And it is in particular this arguing with people which Solomon is talking about, because he's saying any fool can start a quarrel. And a lot of striving is striving about words and personal glory rather than principle. In exploring this proverb, let's look at some of the other references to striving in the scriptures. Psalm 18, a psalm of David, contains the words, You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. These are words of David, but we apply them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it says, You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. How was Jesus delivered from the strivings of the people? Well, by submitting himself to death. There was no more that they could do physically to him, although the world is still striving against his ideas and teaching. Having crucified him, they buried him. But he goes on, You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. This is looking forward to the day when Jesus shall return and be given the kingdoms of this world not just their kingdom of Israel. He was killed king of the Jews. He will return as king of kings and lord of lords. But to understand a little bit more of that, we look at David's own life. David was anointed to be king, but the incumbent king oppressed him, drove him out, made him an outlaw, sought to kill him. And so David spent 10 years or more fleeing from Saul. But he never attacked Saul. He knew he just needed to wait until Saul's time was finished and then it would be his turn. That was a matter of Saul striving against David. But ultimately Saul died in battle at the hand of the Philistines and the people called David to be king. So Antichrist shall rise up but he shall be defeated and Christ shall be appointed. Here though we have an example of deliverance from striving, being taken out of the scene, ultimately by giving in, not to the moral principle, but by not retaliating to the striving. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 22 we read, For what has a man for all his labour, and for all the striving of his heart, with which he has toiled under the sun. Much of life is spent striving against nature to accumulate possessions, striving against people to establish power and authority over them. We can strive for lots of different things, but this striving for position and power on the earth, for possessions, Solomon says, what's the point? In the end you die and you leave it all behind. So we need wisdom as to what we're going to strive for. There are things that we strive for, but we need to know which things to let go and when to let go. Running a race means you put all your energy and effort into it. So this is an example of striving. In 1 Corinthians 9.24, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. This is an encouragement for us to strive to do our best in any situation that we are in. But when you are running a race, you run according to the rules, else you might be first, but you're disqualified, so it doesn't count. There are limits to the things that we can do to achieve our goal. But we are encouraged to run in such a way that we achieve our goal, but according to the rules. 
Now, presenting the gospel is an example of striving against the culture and society of our day. And to the Philippians, Paul wrote, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. We have here the company of believers coming together with a particular purpose, that is to make known the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a goal that is well and truly worth all our effort and attention, but it has to be in a way that brings glory and honour to Christ. Our conduct needs to be worthy of the gospel of Christ. We need to commend the gospel by the manner of our life. Paul is an example of that, and he suffered greatly in his striving to to present the gospel to parts of Asia and then into Europe, Macedonia, and on to Rome. This striving is a striving together, coming together with others who share the view that Jesus is the Lord and he is to be exalted. So, indeed, let us strive together for the faith of the gospel, living lives that are worthy of Christ. Paul himself did a lot of striving. He says, To this end I also labour, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. So Paul was not striving for his agenda, he was striving for God's agenda. And so he was looking for the leading of the Lord. But he was putting his back into it. He wasn't just drifting along. He was labouring. He was striving according to the working of God in his life. But there is other striving. There is striving to win an argument. And much strife that happens among believers is striving about things that maybe we should back away from, as per our proverb. Our proverb was, It is honourable for a man to stop striving, since any fool can start a quarrel. If it's simply a debate on words, there is a point where both sides need to just walk away and say, well, let the Lord decide. There was a strong argument between Paul and his supporters at the end of his third missionary journey, should he return to Jerusalem. Paul had collected a huge gift from the churches of Macedonia to present to the churches in Judea, and particularly Jerusalem. And he really was keen to deliver it himself. But he knew that when he was there, he would be arrested, opposed. So his friends, being aware of that, argued strongly that he should not go up to Jerusalem. But he persisted in saying, no, I must go up. I'm prepared to die if that's what happens. And people still argue about who was right. But Paul's friends stopped striving with him when they saw they could not overthrow Paul's opinion and said, let the will of the Lord be done. Paul paid a huge price for going to Jerusalem. But The result is all of his prison epistles. He led the way for us to withstand in times of pressure. But avoid foolish disputes, he says to Titus, genealogies, contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. We need to choose the things that we will argue about, and we need to strive against sin. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. So the striving that it is honourable to walk away from is striving for material possessions and position before men which will all be taken away from us. Strivings about the law or winning an argument, making a point to establish that we're right and somebody else is wrong. There are more important issues to strive about than being distracted by such arguments. But when it comes to sharing the gospel, that's our prime goal. When it comes to living a life worthy of God, that is our main goal. We need to strive against sin in our own lives.